Something of the essence of physicalism is, very roughly, expressed by the claim that if all the things physicists talk about cease to exist, then all the things psychologists talk about would cease to exist. However, if all the things psychologists talk about cease to exist, the things physicists talk about could continue to exist. So, things like beliefs, desires, memories and consciousness depend, albeit not necessarily in a way that supports direct identification, on things like quarks and space-time, but not vice versa. This means things are really not what we think. This upsets some people because they rather like what they think, or at least what they've been told to think. The radical physicalist suggestion that things are in reality alien to the nature of our thoughts makes for unusual bedfellows amongst its opponents. What could traditional conservative fundamentalists like creationists and postmodern leftists like radical feminists possibly have in common? And yet it's from such distinct ranks, so bitterly opposed in so many other respects, that the most fervent and often eerily similar criticisms of physical science approaches to knowledge emerge. To me, this suggests that advocates and opponents of physicalism don't tend to draw up along left versus right or secular versus religious lines so much as pro versus anti-enlightenment ones. Enlightenment in a rather straightforward Kantian sense too. Those who are pro-enlightenment and more amenable to physicalism seeming more prepared to cultivate a maturity wherein they can think beyond authoritative instruction or childish ideals and wherein they have the courage to know what shall therein be known. And those who are anti-enlightenment and less amenable to physicalism who seem less so prepared. Although I would describe myself as a revisionary naturalist rather than a physicalist, I would, nevertheless, wish to be counted amongst the pro-enlightenment ranks. Thank you for listening.